Losing your job, getting your heart broken, enduring a natural disaster, or experiencing a major health crisis. Most of us in the room right now will face or have already faced a life-altering event. And this moment will be so fundamentally transformative that all the moments before will seem inconsequential in comparison to your new reality. I stand before you today to share a threshold moment of my own that has altered my life in numerous ways. Seizure. Just saying the word makes us all a little uneasy, doesn't it? If I were to tell you right now that I have seizures, would you say that you're sorry? Or would you stand silently in an effort to both comfort and empathize with me? The primary goal of this talk is to both demystify and destigmatize epilepsy and all that pertains to seizures. Hello, my name is Ian Stein, and I have epilepsy. Focal epilepsy characterized by impaired awareness originating in the left temporal lobe, to be exact. I'm lucky to say that I am an innately athletic person, and growing up, some of the activities that brought me the most joy included swinging from the monkey bars, boxing, squash, playing soccer, snowboarding, and obviously winning local belly flop competitions. <laughs> Each and every one of these passions fueled my young and indefatigable engine. Too many soccer balls to the head, my fair share of whiplash, and many, many concussions later, I now suffer the consequences nearly a decade later. An electroencephalogram, more commonly referred to as an EEG, is a test primarily used to track electrical activity in the brain. By fixing several electrodes to a patient's scalp, Neurologists can determine whether or not a patient is having seizures. So I put on my comfy shirt, lay in the examination bed in a cold room, and waited for further instruction. The bed was lined with an excessive amount of cushioning that provided me with a false sense of hope. I was then instructed to shut my eyes as I was subjected to several trials of flashing lights, loud music, and forced hyperventilation, all in an effort to prevent, to provoke a seizure that never came. I knew that I did not have a seizure, but why? It all seemed way too good to be true. An ambulatory EEG, 72 hours, and an unbearable amount of embarrassment walking around for three days looking like Elon Musk's next disaster. <laughs> we reached our verdict. I needed to be awake. My eyes needed to be open for me to have a seizure. This past September of 2022, I was diagnosed with focal epilepsy after years of living in denial. I could not fathom why my mind would constantly go blank or why fatigue was so, so inescapable. Many times my friends would often say, hey Ian, it seems like you're there, but at the same time, you're not. And what are you thinking about when you stare off like that all the time? Or why don't you answer my questions, Ian? Are you even listening? Well, the sad truth is, I did not hear the questions my friends were asking me because my meandering mind had its own agenda. And I was not thinking about anything during these moments of disconnection because my mind would go blank. No gears turning, only frustrating nothingness. Now I invite you all into my mind. Extend an arm and stare at two fingers as intensely as you possibly can while squinting. A seizure is approaching. Your vision hyperfixates on the fingers. All else becomes a blur. Keep staring. You're transported to a fuzzy state of consciousness where muffled noises are only faintly heard. Keep staring. 
As your breath slows, your mind wanders autonomously. You may now lower your arms. As the seizure fades and I reemerge into reality, I am left completely depleted of all energy and happiness. At its worst, these events would occur every other minute for up to 10 seconds at a time. To paraphrase Kurt Eichenwald, author of the riveting memoir A Mind Unraveled, if I wanted to remember what happened to me during seizures, I'd spend all my time trying to remember. The accumulation of our memories weaves the basket that is our thoughts. Pretty good, right? Say it again. <laughs> the accumulation of our memories weaves the basket that is our thoughts. Finding myself in a liminal position, somewhere between present and not present, unable to recollect even the fondest moments of my recent past, renders me an outcast to myself. Seizures have undoubtedly distanced me from my dearest family and friends. This past summer, it was even so bad. I would frequently sleep for hours during the day just to reset my brain. Today, nearly 50 million people worldwide live with active epilepsy, according to the World Health Organization. And up to 70% of these people could live seizure free with proper treatments and medication. I'm realizing, because of this experience, How privileged I am to be able to afford these expensive medicines, to have a family that has supported me through it all and a community I can lean on, all of which have made this talk possible. One way I move forward with this knowledge is to be more aware of myself and the world. And that is actually something this condition has gifted me with. Making peace with the part of me that has seizures has allowed for a deeper understanding of myself, opened my eyes to the harmfulness of judgment, and shaped me into a more forgiving person with myself and others. At the beginning, I said this talk was about seizures, but really, it is about our individual journey to self love, self compassion, and self acceptance. Whether you have seizures or not, We all fight our own and individual unique battles. But we do not have to fight them alone. Everyone has a part of themselves that is hard to love, hard to accept, that we fear exposing. But we cannot let these things define us. We cannot let them break us. With the help of our friends, families, communities, neighbors, but most importantly ourselves, We can become the architects of our own reality, no matter what life throws our way. Thank you. <laughs>